Hello, welcome. Today, the question is disk or shell? Which one should we use? How do we know? How do we decide which one's the most efficient? All those sort of questions. So should we be dealing with cucumber? Should we be dealing with an onion? The shell, got the concentric rings, the disk, we've got the slices. So let's take a look at what the basic difference between the two things are. So we have some sort of function. Y is some function of x, typically, is what we're dealing with. And, and typically, we look at some sort of a representative slice, like perhaps that. And this slice is a delta x slice or dx slice. So you know we know that we're going to have some sort of integral. And our integral probably is going to have to involve dx. And our function is a function of x. So all those reasons would want us to you know, not have to change this to a function of x as a function of y. So it comes down to, where are we rotating? What's the rotation look like? So if I take that slice and I rotate it about the x-axis, then I'm going to end up with disks. So in this case, because my slice is perpendicular to the axis, rotation, I'm going to want to use the disk method, yeah, or possibly the washer if there was a hole that we had to take into account. Okay, if we look at a slice on this side, okay, again, this is a dy sort of slice. I'm sorry, scratch that. This is a dx sort of slice. That's what I really meant to say. If we rotate it about the y-axis, had that on my brain, that's why I said dy. But if we, uh, above me, there we go. Uh, if we rotate about the y-axis this time, we're going to end up with concentric rings. Yeah, again, we could, if we really were up for it, we could try to draw in, you know, to make it a disk method by solving this, making it x as a function of y, and we could uh, use disk method. But we don't want to go through the hassle of changing changing things. So in this case, since my since we're parallel to the axis of rotation, that is when we want to use the shell method. And again, it comes down to perpendicular versus shell parallel, how they kind of run. So that's going to be our sort of our thing. Of what's the easiest thing to do in terms of the information that we have in terms of the way the function is set up? Let's look at a couple. Okay, good idea. All right, so we've got y equals x squared plus 1, which is incidentally the function I think that we just looked at. No, it's, it's a different function. y equals x squared plus 1. Right there, we're going to look at the intersection of between y equals 0, which is the x-axis, x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and x equals 1, which is this line here. Shade in what we're talking about. We're talking about this region-ish right there. And we're going to rotate that about the y-axis. Okay. So y is a function of x, so if I throw in a dx sort of a slice, like that, uh, rotate it around, we're, we're certainly looking at a shell method as a, uh, as a better plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I could, if I wanted to, try to do disks. I could probably solve this. But if I use a disk method, I'm going to end up doing an integral with this slice using you know, 1 minus the function. And then I'd have a different integral with that slice. And so I'm doing two integrals. And so it doesn't make sense to try to change this into something else. So we just uh, go back to single dx slice. And we'd set this up very easily to deal with a shell method. So the setup for the shell method, if you remember, is 2 pi integral. We've got to figure out what my radius is so we can get a circumference. And the radius is going to just be x in this case. Okay, so we've got circumference. We're going to multiply by the height, which is the function, x squared plus 1. And so we've got circumference. We've got surface area. We add another layer that gets us volume. The integral gets us all the volumes. So we go with dx. In this case, we're just going to be moving the slice from 0 on over to 1. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. So not a big deal. Shell method, not you know one extra layer in there, but not that big a deal. Certainly easier than trying to solve a function for something for something else. Okay, so I will leave that for you. Apparently, I did want to change the page. New one. <clears throat> We're looking this time at the region bounded by 
this curve, y equals x cubed plus x plus 1. This line right here, y is equal to 1. This line right here, x is equal to 1. And this time, very bad job shading, John. Very bad job speaking, but even a worse job shading. But we'll, you'll forgive me, I'm sure. We're going to rotate about x equals 2. So it does make it a little more difficult, but still not so bad. Okay, right away we know I can't easily or even any way that I'm aware of turn this into x as a function of y. So we're stuck with this. We're stuck with making my representative slice there. So that slice is parallel, so we're definitely using a shell method. Okay, so shell method, start with 2 pi. Got to get to the radius. Remember the radius is the distance from the slice to the axis of rotation. Okay? This one gets a little different because this whole way out here is 2. This way from here in, we know to be x, x. So this distance, which is my radius, is going to be 2 minus x. Right? x, 2, 2 minus x. So my radius that I'm dealing with for the circle part, if you remember, is 2 minus x. Height of my function is the difference between this curve and 1. So it's going to be x cubed plus x plus 1 minus my lower function, 1. Nice, those go away. Uh, I've got circumference. I've got surface area. My dx, I don't know why to put in parentheses, but I did. Uh, that gives me the volume. Integrate gets me all of them. We're just going to integrate, in this case, from 0 to 1 again. See what that looks like if we make it a little nicer looking. 2 pi integral from 0 to 1. 2 minus x times x cubed plus x. We need to expand that out if we we're going to try to do this by hand, but honestly, uh, at this point, we've got the setup. We can jump right to the calculator and come up with an answer, and I will leave that for you to do. See if we've got anything else. That's, that's it. How can that be? Uh, disc or shell? You get to decide what's the best thing. Well, you don't really get to decide. You go with what's the easiest way to go about it. The ones I showed you today were the easiest to do with the shell method. And if they turn out to be easier to do with the disk method, like if we were rotating about this axis, then certainly the disk method or the washer method would make, make more sense. Uh, likewise, rotating this around this axis. So it depends really about which axis we're using. That's going to tell us which way we're going to go. Disk or shell, easy enough to do, easy enough to distinguish. I think you can do it. So that's about all for today. Bring questions if you have them. We'll work on some problems tomorrow. Thanks for listening.